Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt. And in this video, I'm going to talk about liquidity grabs, which was requested by a couple of you in the comments section over the past couple of videos. And so I figured I would make a video touching up on this topic and who knows, I might always make a part two. Now I will be using Bitcoin, so this isn't a full Bitcoin analysis video, but I felt that this is a good way for me to introduce the concept to some of you that are unfamiliar with it. So I'll be answering the questions such as what is a liquidity grab and where is it more likely to occur and how is it likely to play out and you guys know the drill if you end up finding this at any point in time informative be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't yet and you can check out the links in the description to join my public trading community or my private community where I have in-depth live streams with members multiple times per week and even more trading guidance is offered as well now in front of you we do have the four hour chart for Bitcoin and what I circled here in yellow on the right would represent the most recent liquidity grab that occurred. Now, some of you might wonder why is this considered a liquidity grab? And that's where it's a little bit subjective. And technically, if we think about it, we had an additional liquidity grab before this one, and that occurred down over here on April 18th. But the way that I look at it is I try to identify an obvious region of either support or resistance that has been respected multiple times before. And this doesn't always need to involve support and resistance. It can also involve trend lines. But basically what happens is if I play this back to, uh, to April 17th before we had the first liquidity grab down here. And so notice how the price action was forming consecutive higher lows. So all of these have been respected quite well. And a term that I like to use with some of my members in the private live streams is a staircase formation. And this is just a visual method that helps some people sort of understand as to where a liquidity grab is likely to occur if you have higher highs and higher lows or lower highs and lower lows. And that's where if you have, in this case, higher lows that have been respected quite well multiple times in a row, once this starts to become a pretty obvious move where the majority of retail traders start seeing this, this is where they'll, they'll look to trade the next rejection off of the trend line in this case. So, so since we're forming higher lows and we do have this temporary uptrend, many would have looked to trade the next uh, tap of where we tap into this trend line. And obviously, if we play this forward, we can see how the price action broke this trend line at this point. But that was only part of the liquidity grab in this case. We also have to keep in mind that in addition to this minor trend line that was slanted upwards, we also had these lows to the left, especially these two on April 11th and the one on April 12th that are basically equal lows, or you could call them similar lows, equal highs or equal lows. And the reason why this is important when it comes to liquidity grabs is that if a level becomes too obvious where you have either equal lows or equal highs, and it's something that the majority of retail traders notice, this is where they will look to place their stop loss if they're already in this trade. So let's say that they're buying or they're currently in buys their stop loss will reside right below these two levels uh, over here because these are the most obvious lows that have been rejected twice before. So this is where their stop losses will reside, right below these lows. Or the opposite is also true, where if you're not a buyer, but you're looking to sell, well, you're going to look to sell as soon as the price action pushes below these equal lows, at least in the minds of what the majority of retail traders look to do. And so you need to think about this as representing a giant dollar sign where institutions will seek to target these levels for liquidity, meaning that they understand that a ton of retail traders and even other smaller, dumber institutions will be looking to either sell the breakout or will have their stop loss set over here. And if we think about this, if you're in a buy position, the only way to exit is to sell. So that would represent a sell stop order. And those orders for institutions are where they can now take those orders and place 
their orders at, in this case, a discount price, right? So they want to buy at the best prices as this is pushing down into this level. And obviously the opposite would be true if this occurred above obvious highs or above an obvious level of resistance, which we'll get to in just a second. But now if I play this forward, notice how not only did we spike and break below this trend line, but we also now spiked and broke below these lows. And then once that happened, this is where the majority of retail traders, if they aren't panicking at this point because they either got taken out, they might even double down on their position, which in this case ended up with a loss since they got squeezed out of their trades. And then that's where the price action continued pushing in the initial direction that it was going to. So notice how we had this upwards staircase formation right where these lows were gradually being respected it almost formed this staircase this is what i like to use when it comes to an obvious trend line that is being respected that was invalidated and again these lows were invalidated and so this is basically what a liquidity grab is where a liquidity grab is a sweep above or below an obvious level of support or an obvious level of resistance. And you'll typically have equal highs, equal lows, or a bullish or bearish trend line that is very obvious. So keyword, it's obvious. And that's where these liquidity grabs typically occur. Now, after this, if I play this forward, right, we obviously pushed into the upside. And so something interesting happens over here, where initially we had this high here marked on April 13th, that's at around $41.5,000. And then this recent high around $41.8,000. And then you can see how we had this quick engulfing formation where we pushed up and then we closed back down. So what's interesting here is that technically this is a liquidity grab but one thing that you'll notice is that after that we attempted to push below the low we never closed below it and then we continued pushing again and then this gave us our second major liquidity grab so you can technically classify the first one as a minor one but this is our major liquidity grab and one thing that you'll notice with these liquidity grabs is you'll typically depending on the time frame that you look at you'll either have a large wick in either direction that broke below an obvious level of support or above an obvious level of resistance. So in this case, our obvious level of support was at around $39.3,000. We had this quick spike down, this quick spike up, so this V formation, and then our obvious level of resistance. This was a little bit less obvious, but if we look to the left, notice how we had support up here around 42,000. And so if you extend this to the right, this is a region where a lot of traders would be looking at this as resistance. And so that was sweeped with this upside down V formation, or what I like to call it an A formation. Okay, and this happens quickly, right? Because institutions aren't looking to place their orders forever depending of course on the time frame where this occurs since this is the four hour time frame this only took a few hours to play out but if we saw a liquidity grab on a higher time frame this is going to take a lot longer to play out right and so once again as these traders were being trapped into bu buying above these highs or those that got taken out with tight stop losses that sold over here as that was unfolding the smarter institutional side was the one that was entering their orders over here. So either they were ent entering sell orders or if they bought down here, this is where they would look to take profit, right? So if you're a buyer, you're going to look to take profit where sellers are typically looking to sell. And if you're, if you're a seller, you're going to look to take profit where buyers are looking to buy. And so, of course, that's one way to look at it. So let me place another dollar sign up here to represent liquidity. And if you guys recall from my last Bitcoin update video, uh, remember that we did have the price imbalance that was residing up here around forty two point five thousand dollars. So, of course, the price, this price imbalance was also targeted here before due to the low transaction volume that was residing in the past. So, of course, that's where due to the price inefficiency, this was targeted to place more orders from an institutional standpoint. And then, of course, like I said, we had this quick V formation. And if you think about it, the reason you do have these large A or these large V formations is because 
of liquidity. Liquidity basically represents orders where a ton of money is being pumped into the market, right? It takes a ton of money in order to move uh, the markets, especially if you have an asset such as Bitcoin with such a large market cap. You can't just put in $10,000 or $100,000 or hell, even a million dollars and to expect to push Bitcoin a couple thousand dollars in a single direction. This this takes a ton, a ton of money, right? Which is why institutions are the ones behind this because they have billions of dollars or multi millions worth of dollars to pump into the market over hundreds or dozens of different orders that they continually place, right? A lot of it is tied to their algorithms, which are the best in the world, typically for the top level institutions. And so that's what we need to be aware of. Now, the last point that I wanted to discuss when it comes to these liquidity grabs is typically what I find, and I'm just going to draw this up here, is that whenever you do have a liquidity grab, this will typically occur inside of a range. Now, you can argue that this ties into the Wyckoff uh, models where you have either accumulation and distribution. And to that, I agree, where let's say the price action is basically ranging you have an obvious level of resistance that's been rejected multiple times you have an obvious level of support typically this would represent a range a range is nothing more than a pause in a, the market where the price action is moving sideways and if it's moving sideways and it's bouncing between a level of resistance and a level of support that represents a range so this is typically why i see ranges tied into liquidity grabs right so let's say we have this range over here we have this obvious level of support or obvious level of resistance let's say the larger uptrend so let's say we're currently in a a daily uptrend we're more likely to reaccumulate orders and to continue pushing into the upside if the demand outweighs the supply. And so in this case, this is where the liquidity grab would typically occur, where we sleep, sweep below these obvious lows. OK, and so that quickly would occur. And then that's where the price action would continue pushing in the other direction. And in one of my last videos, I did discuss liquidity grabs and how they sometimes turn into whipsaw. So if you haven't checked that out, I will also link that in the description down below, right? So if we go back to our previous example here with Bitcoin, notice how we had this range where we basically had support and we had resistance. And if you're having trouble figuring it out, then you can always change the time frame, right? So you could pay attention to where we've had the majority of reactions before. And you need to think about where would the majority of retail traders look to get in, because that's where the liquidity is residing. And that's what's likely to get targeted by the institutions. And the last point that I also wanted to bring up when it comes to liquidity grabs is that you need to keep in mind that depending on the time frame that you look at, the size of the liquidity grab might take longer to play out. So what I mean is that in our previous example on the four hour time frame, remember how the liquidity grab took a couple of hours to play out. But now on the weekly chart for Bitcoin, notice how when we pushed into the new all time highs, so where we got pretty close to $70,000, this in itself represented a liquidity grab too. Now, this doesn't look very obvious. You might question as to how this looks like an A or a V formation, or how is this a wick? And that's where sometimes the A formation, right, might look like an M or the V formation might look like a W. So the exact shape is not important. What you simply need to understand is you need to think about, like I said, where is an obvious level of resistance? In this case, that was residing here at around 62 to maybe 63 or 64 thousand dollars for bitcoin we had this previous all-time high before we pushed up into it in october and november of last year and then this is where the liquidity grab occurred so we pushed above these highs this is where a ton of traders were looking to buy into bitcoin a couple of months ago and they got squeezed out before we ended up dropping right so before this weekly bearish trend unfolded. So notice how this liquidity grab, let's go onto the monthly chart. Now we can see the wick. So this wick for this, the month of November, spiked above the high of October's uh, wick, 
or October is high. So on a higher time frame, you will typically see wicks and on lower time frames, you might see V formations or A formations. So I'm going to wrap this up here. Hopefully you learned something new and let me know if you'd like for me to make a part two or if you'd like for me to clarify something a bit better that I explained. So as always, drop a like if you found this helpful and subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet. Links in the description to my trading community or if you'd like to gain access to additional guides, in-depth live streams multiple times per week and much more as well. Otherwise, that's all for this video. I will speak to you guys next one.